I can't wait not to watch that. Hey everybody, let's quickly talk about three movies that I've seen lately. One is Early Man, which I saw today. One is Hostiles, and the other is Fifty Shades Freed. We will start with Hostiles, because I saw that one first. So, by the way, I have a letterboxed account now, so if you just want to look at what my thoughts are rather than listen to or watch, because I'm boring on camera, feel free to follow that. Um, I will add it to the list of links on my little stupid website thing that is down there. Um, so, Hostiles. It stars Christian Bale and two other people, I don't know. An Indian chief and Rosamund Pike, who I only know because I had to look up her name because I couldn't remember her character's name to write the review on Letterboxd. Um, everyone in this movie is super forgettable. Christian Bale's mustache is probably the real star of the movie. So, right away the movie starts with Rosamund Pike. Um, her family is under siege by Comanches at their house. And her husband, who I can't remember if he was named at all, but he might have been unnamed. Her husband's like, take the kids and, and run. I, I will hold our ground and... Hopefully they don't burn the house down. And she pretty understandably goes, Just let him burn it down! Just come with us! Run away! And he doesn't. He tells them to run. They do. He takes a couple of shots with his lever-action rifle. He misses every single one. And then he gets shot in the leg, which causes him to fall down on the ground. Then the Indians roll up to him about that far away in screen space. And the closest one to him winds up, shoots him with an arrow from nowhere away. <laughs> and at this point, he's like maybe wiggling around on the ground, but he's basically dead. Um, at, I mean, it's already to the point of stop, stop, he's already dead. Um, and then another one goes down, scalps him, and it's like just a scrap of... Um, a scrap of scalp like this big and I'm like man and glorious bastards did scalping so much better they actually you know pulled him by the hair and took the whole fucking thing off like pulled off a yarmulke of hair um, the Comanches are just yeah we got a scrap of skin that's fine um, so meanwhile Rosamund Pike and the girls are running away and Mind you, she has a baby in her hands. And, uh, in three gunshot sound effects, left daughter goes down in one shot and insta dies. Right daughter goes down in one shot and dies instantly. And the baby that's in her arms gets shot. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I'm laughing out loud harder than I did in the theater but that's only because I had to stop myself in the theater because the theater wasn't empty apart from me and my two friends that came to see it with me god damn it that was so funny because the baby gets hit and it hasn't even made crying sounds to this point um and <laughs> after it gets hit it surely doesn't um it just soundlessly gets hit, and that's it, the baby's dead, and she just continues to run with it. Keep in mind, the, she was holding the baby, like, here, and she did not take any damage from, like, the bullet stopped in the baby. The baby saved her life. The It was a bulletproof baby, basically. So... She runs off, hides, whatever, and that's the most memorable thing in the movie, is just baby getting shot. Uh, other than that, 
The general gist of the story is Christian Bale is on a delivery quest to deliver the, um, it's an escort quest. He's, uh, delivering the Indian chief to whatever. And if you've seen the Oregon Trail review, the Oregon Trail card game review that's on my channel somewhere, it's, <laughs> I kept thinking of that the whole time I was watching this movie because it was structured as silly as that thing. Although I will say that I think my Oregon Trail review that I did with Kyle is funnier than, well, of course it's funnier than Hostiles because it was trying to be funny, but I think it's better in like general plot than fucking Hostiles was. We even, we wrote what is essentially the ending to Hostiles, spoilers, um, which was, he, his character was going to die from the snake bite, obviously. And, uh, what was gonna happen is we were gonna cut to, alright, we made it! Like, I make it to Willamita Valley, Oregon, and then pan over to the skeleton. And I'm just like, we did it, buddy! Yeah, we're, we made it here. Uh, that happens in Hostiles, although obviously not with a skeleton. The, ch the Indian chief dies before they make it to their destination, and they, <laughs> I guess, do a funeral pyre? No, they don't. They prop his body up, and then they light a bonfire. Like, his body's propped up over here in the frame, and there's a bonfire going on over here-ish in the frame. And it's like, okay, it's ceremonial, I suppose. Why are you doing this? And then the last scene in the movie, one of the last scenes in the movie is a big dumb gunfight between some guy that's like, get off my property. Take your red and get off of here. I ain't gonna tell you again. He says I'm not gonna tell you again about five times. So, whatever, big dumb gunfight happens. Christian Bale gets hit in his forearm, and then the last scene, we were all, once we got out of the theater, we were all joking about how, like, I had noticed that in the final scene where it's this big goodbye between Christian Bale and Rosamund Pike's, Rosamund Pike's character, that the camera was framed kind of like I have it framed right now, where you can't see his forearm unless he was to stupidly raise his arm into frame. So I was, I was waiting for the camera to back out and he would just have this stump of an arm. <laughs> and then the final thing that happens in the movie is he lets them go on this train and then he walks away, then he walks back to the train and jumps on the caboose. I was waiting because presumably he does not have his own ticket. I was waiting for a conductor to push him back out of the back of the train and be like, sir, I need to see your ticket. And then they're like fighting each other and Christian Bale grabs the guy's lapel and they all, they both fall down off of the train. We were just fucking laughing so much at that. But yeah, uh, Hostiles is not, not great. There are 10 traveling montages in Hostiles. They are basically crossfade things and if I remember to, by the time I'm done talking about the other two movies, and maybe if I edit this at all, um, I will have to edit in a goofy little thing that you basically have to do if you have a noble savage chief Indian, which is like, say, if I get over here in the frame, sort of, like, I'm just gonna get here so I can make room on that side of the frame for, um, just profile shot. So, just over there should be Chief Me being really stoic. And, and that happened in one of the montages. It's ridiculous. So, that's Hostiles. Uh, that movie was bad. Don't bother. It's not a fun Cowboys and Indians movie like it might look like. 
Uh, let's see. Next on the list, Fifty Shades Free, which I or Fifty Shades Freed, which I saw by accident on um, not I didn't see it by accident, but I saw it on Valentine's Day by accident. Like I realized once I was in the theater, oh shit, it's Valentine's Day and I'm in the theater for a Fifty Shades movie. God damn it. Uh, I have not seen either of the other Fifty Shades movies, nor have I read the books. So I went in with as little context as possible. I just knew, ah, oh, I can go see some terrible softcore porn in a theater with other people who presumably are also going to see terrible softcore porn because goddamn, I hope people are not going to see this for the plot. Because there isn't really any... It's, um, I should have kept a tally of how many dumb sex scenes there were, because there were a lot, including one that punctuated a car chase. Um, so I'm going to sort of use my review on the aforementioned letterbox account as notes. Um, oh yeah, my, my familiarity with Fifty Shades is only to the extent of that Gilbert Gottfried video where he's reading Fifty Shades Free, or Fifty Shades of Grey, and he goes, Clitoris, that one. That That's all the context I have for the Fifty Shades series. So, okay, the movie opens with Anastasia and Christian getting married, and it's like, they do their vows, she has this giant fucking huge... Michael Scott three years salary ring on and uh, you know the I do's blah 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 and then immediately after the wedding you cut to jumping into Christian's private jet and Anastasia goes wow you own this and I'm like so many times throughout the movie I just tilt my head in my hand and I'm like what what is happening now and this was the first of many because I'm like wait a minute they got married and she didn't know he was like rich as dicks and had a private jet what the fuck what are you doing and then nearly immediately after that they're like having dinner and or probably a sex scene or two later they're having dinner and Anastasia brings up the topic of having kids and I'm like okay whatever wait you just got married, and you've never discussed whether or not you both want to have kids? What in the hell? Who gets married without discussing that? That's a deal breaker. That's really big deal. You can't just do that. Don't, don't get married and not know that you want to have kids. What the fuck? <sighs> and then Christian's just a fucking man-child. He's like... I don't want to share you with anyone, including an, a child that you made together because you wanted to. What? Um. Like. Okay, going back to the car chase, which is actually probably skipping forward a bit in the movie, and it's the only other thing that I really remember in the movie, and it's partly because tangentially related to Fifty Shades of Grey, it being Twilight fan fiction. I remember from the original Twilight's commentary, I have watched that movie with commentary only, I've never watched it normally, um, Robert Pattinson, he points out that if you look out the window of the car, like as they're driving and he's supposed to be driving all super angry and crazy, and she's like, Edward, slow down. Uh, if you look out the window, they're only moving like 20, 30 miles an hour, like it's not a big deal. And this ruins any car scene in most movies. Because, you know, usually they're not actually driving the car. And if they are, they're usually not driving crazy fast or anything like that. Baby Driver being an exception. But, uh, this car chase, which was heavily, um, like... They, they included the car chase in the trailer for Fifty Shades Freed. And it's it plays out in the trailer like something out of a Fast and the Furious movie. And I'm like, oh my god, what all this crazy drama. 
in the actual movie, it's set to some weird upbeat pop music, and there's no tension whatsoever, and Christian's just like, you drive, lose him. What? You didn't even want her to drive the car, and now you want her to lose people? What the fuck? Uh, and then losing them, fucking, all that means is maybe get 50 feet ahead of them and then pull off into this completely open air parking lot in front of a convenience store in this conspicuous as fuck car. It's like a really crazy expensive looking Audi and then have sex in the car. Oh, we lost him. And oh, this is not the time for this. Shut up. And then she mounts him in the passenger seat and they have the world's quickest sex ever. <sighs> that, mm, this movie was so bad. Not even good softcore porn. I should have kept a tally of how many sex scenes there were, just like I was counting how many traveling montages there were in Hostiles. But I didn't, and the world is worse for it. Or at least, this video is worse for it. On to the third movie. Early Man, which I saw today because I could not see Black Panther because Black Panther is fucking sold out everywhere. On the plus side, I did get to watch those two hack frauds talk about Black Panther today, so eh, it's all good. So Early Man, I didn't actually pay much attention at all to any trailers for it because I was like, oh, it's those guys that made Wallace and Gromit and Chicken Run. That, that might be alright. And I might go see that. Maybe. So I saw it today out of desperation for not seeing Black Panther. And I... I'm glad I saw it, but it's not worth seeing. Because the very first gag in the movie is also the gag that I'm convinced they wrote and made the entire movie based on. That is... Uh, I don't know how much it's featured in the trailer, but Early Man is the story of Early Man inventing soccer and then playing soccer for the sake of getting the valley back. Like it's a it's a do the sport to save the rec center plot, right? So it's a soccer movie. Keep that in mind as I explain the opening shot of the movie. The opening shot of the movie is wide shot of Earth, and then zoom in um, to ground level, and then you have, I don't know if they say the year, probably millions BC, blah, 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 whatever. Some nonsensical year that doesn't make sense because there's both dinosaurs and man on Earth, and that is not a thing that happened. But that's pedantry. Um, you cut to the ground level with the cavemen fighting each other and whatever, and dinosaurs fighting each other, and then a meteor comes down and blows up everything, except it doesn't actually kill anything. It just breaks everything and turns everything to ash and rubble and then the cavemen are totally fine. They come out of the rubble, which was kind of annoying. But then they go over to the crater and um, they find a soccer, well, they find the meteor and it's shaped like a soccer ball and it's very hot. So they can't touch it with their hands, um, but they can kick it with their feet and it's fine. It's like playing hot potato. And this is how soccer was invented by cavemen. Rewind a bit. As we're doing this establishing shot, two bits of text, maybe in addition to the year, like I said, I don't remember. Two bits of text come up. One is near Manchester. Soccer movie, early man near Manchester. Do you get it? Do you know what joke they're doing? Do you know where, do you know the joke they just ruined? 
as the stupid dad joke reveal. And the other line was um, near lunchtime, which I think was maybe, you know, it's just very specific, overly specific. I want to say they did that same sort of thing in the Wallace and Gromit movies, but it fits that sort of humor. But the near Manchester part, when they did it in the intro, I was like, oh, that's that's funny. Like, it's overly specific. And then when the soccer ball happened, I'm like, oh my god, it's going to be early Manchester United. I, mm, It's the story of Manchester United. And fucking whatever the hell else, I don't care. And then, like, I laughed when, it, when the original little gag text showed up. I, I giggled at that, because it was, it was funny. It's overly specific. But then, in the climax, in the soccer match at the end of the movie, they had commentators, because you have to, because it's funny, right? And at one, or at one point, maybe two-thirds through the movie, it's like, brought up that Real Bronzio, Real Madrid, um, they're not a team, they're, they're a bunch of guys who all think they're the star, you guys are a team, but she doesn't say you're united, <laughs> but in the climactic game, one of the commentators says, it's like early man, united, see what I did there, like, he actually says, see what I did there. Yes! I saw what you did there in the opening scene, you fuck! God damn it. Ah! This is so annoying. If you're gonna write a movie around one joke, you can't ruin the joke at the beginning and then also do the joke at the end. Fuck. Ugh. Man, early... Fucking God. I almost said Manchester United. Early man is the worst of like all the Wallace and Gromit and Chicken Run, that that studio, the, the people that make those, because it's very clearly the same people. It's the worst that they've made. It's bad. So there you go, three reviews of three bad movies that I saw in the past week? Maybe two weeks? Those are all the movies I've seen since the Oscar roundup. Yay! Maybe I will get back into making a video per thing or maybe I'll just keep being lazy and making them every so often as multiple movie things I don't fucking know I don't care I'll see you all in the next one